Hey everybody, welcome to Tech Recycle, where we combine the latest in neurotechnology with ancient wisdom to supercharge your brain. I'm Dr. Cody Rawl, your medical doctor confidant. As we pass the 10,000 subscriber count on this channel, I just wanted to say a very heartfelt thank you. This I couldn't have asked for a more involved audience, and this is becoming really apparent as, you know, not only all the questions that are sent to me, all the emails that I really try to respond to as many as a of them as I can, but also as we roll into these coaching programs, how many people are interested in seeing how their brain interacts with technology, specifically EEG brainwaves for now. And I wanted to take this opportunity to say, make sure you leave comments on this video about content that you would like to, me to cover in the near future. I really um, would appreciate uh, what people are thinking, what are on their minds, what are, what's on your mind and how I can better serve this community that's really uh, grown around Tech vs. Psych. So last month I put together a video about all the content that I felt made the biggest impact in the last year, year and a half. And uh, it was pretty, pretty incredible to go through the advancement of all the technology that's happening right now in this space. Uh, we started out with just the Muse headband and Muse Connect came online where physicians and providers and clinicians could actually see their clients' brainwaves delivered to them over the, the internet. And then pretty quickly that evolved into MindLift coming into the game. And MindLift has played such a huge role in this community in providing actual real neurofeedback that you can do at home that the provider can set the individual brainwaves and really uh, enhance people's ability to self-regulate and control their own brainwaves through neurofeedback technology. Things like Dr. Creek Olson's work in validating the, the EEG signal and coming up with new apps to track things like attention and of course all the new devices that are coming up and have become more prominent to include Halo Sport 2, Dream 2. There's so many things that are coming into second and third echelons of maturity that uh, are really impacting this community in a big way. And for me, a huge highlight was seeing an actual functional near infrared device that was mobile that would interact with your tablet. And that was just mind blowing to me to see where this community is headed. We're really headed to a multifactorial uh, biometric wearables that are going to allow us to interact with our brains and our bodies in ways that have never been before seen, really democratizing that ability to train yourself at home. And uh, you know, it's gonna open up whole new marketplaces for coaches, for uh, self-development, for athletes, for uh, business people that wanna hone their attention or relaxation skills, and especially people that want to engage in meditation and really accelerate their spiritual development. You know, we had Dr. Jim Hart on here uh, last video, and it was really interesting to talk to him about what he's seen in the last 40 years of being in the neurofeedback community and having people like high profile like Tony Robbins even come in doing his training and, and talking so much about it. So this niche is exploding, there's a lot going on. Uh, and as I pass 10,000 subscribers, it's a time of reflection. And I wanted to talk about a little bit about how I actually got here. It's, um, I never thought I'd be on YouTube talking to thousands of people per video. And uh, it just makes me think back to medical school. Basically what happened is I got into medical school and uh, I had had this history of making short films as a child actually. Um, I like to play with Legos a lot and stop animation was something that was interesting to me. So I actually got one of the very first Lego stop animation cameras that I remember I used to use on my old PC, like the family PC. The, f the family only had one computer and it was downstairs in the basement. And uh, I would, you know, use my stop animation camera, my Lego camera to make Lego movies. And I, I loved that. Just being able to create whole scenes and have... Uh, these little pieces move. And what I liked most about it is when people would see it, they'd be really entertained. And I'd get a huge sense of satisfa satisfaction out of that. Um, and that evolved into high school projects where maybe I would have to do a film on um, the Romans and I would make a Lego video about the Romans uh, to show the whole class and people really enjoyed that. And then uh, other video projects where I was filming my friends being kind of in the more director role. Uh, I'd fill in in certain roles, just kind of like a Quentin Tarantino type feel, although I probably didn't know who he was back then. But really enjoyed making short films. 
And when I ended up deciding, because I loved science, I loved biology, and I liked people um, going into medicine, when I got into medical school and I was just studying all the time, I noticed that uh, I wasn't as fulfilled as I thought that I would be. There was a creative element in my life that was uh, missing because I had already always had little projects that I was working on. So um, I tried a number of different projects, uh, wrote a couple of pieces, did some research, and realized that I really loved this idea of brain scan technology because, you know, probably just like you, I could see the impact, the possibilities, the potential behind uh, brain scan technology. So in med school, I remember I was walking up to the gym. This is actually my third year of med school. And I was thinking about projects that I could do. And I remembered back to making short films and how much I enjoyed that, how much I loved uh, videography. And I was like, man, you know what would be crazy is if I had a YouTube channel. And back then it just seemed so far outside of my reality. And I'm not sure if that was because I felt like uh, I had self-limiting beliefs about me being able to actually make a YouTube channel and have a captive audience. Or maybe the fact that, um, you know, Instagram and this whole um, influencer uh, movement wasn't really started yet. That was uh, really in the early days before this whole thing caught fire. So I feel like <clears throat> maybe it's because what I do and what I pay attention to, but it seems like everybody's trying to be an influencer these days. But regardless, uh, it just seemed like such a lofty goal. And I remember uh, just walking along the sidewalk and I actually know where I had the, the thought of actually vid visited that place in the past. Um, it's, a, it's kind of on um, near Second City of some of you uh, might know that uh, area in Chicago in Old Town. That's the path that I used to walk up to uh, the gym almost every day. Then it was this whole process because I'd never really worked with DSLRs. I always just had, uh, you know, a handy cam, but like the quality wasn't as good as what I was seeing in a lot of YouTube videos online. And uh, oh my gosh, figuring out how to get a good lapel mic with a uh, good audio system took a long time, uh, you know, just experimenting with different microphones and trying to find my way, uh, getting lights to be able to illuminate myself properly and learning all about photography so that it actually looked good and it sounded good. That, you know, took within a good year or so. And then, you know, I was fiddling, uh, coming up with new projects. And then finally, uh, around the time I was in residency, in psychiatry residency, really fell in love with this idea of uh, brain imaging technology and where that was taking us. And that's really where the name Tech for Psych came out of. You know, I wanted to see what technology we could use to interact with our minds. Uh, as you know, psych is the Greek word for mind and, uh, you know, psychology, psychiatry, that's where the root is. And I wanted to see how technology interacted with that. So I just started making videos about what I was learning about. Uh, I was so curious, so uh, interested in things like magnetic encephalography, uh, functional MRI brain scans, um, neurofeedback, and even weird subjects like fractal geometry or uh, different medications. And it's so funny to look back at some of those first videos and see how choppy I was, how awkward and stilted I was, and how just over the years, I've been able to develop this ability to get more in flow state. Several themes really emerged over the years of doing all these videos. And I really try to revisit these concepts a little bit within each video, if not at least every other video or so. Now, the first one was always self-improvement, which I'm a huge believer in, whether that be developing your mind, your physical, physique, learning. Um, and I really wanted to build a community that was based on that, so it was really healthy. Uh, second was this idea of exponential technology. I think it's undeniable that we're living in a world of uh, quick technological development, and we need to be aware of that and interacting with that and using that to our advantage, not only to uh, beat the competition, but you know we're on a bit of a runaway train here. You know we need to use the technology in order to fix um, some big world problems and. Uh, you know, what better goal to send to uh, when thinking about uh, using this technology in an era of, uh, in, with a base of self-improvement. And the third uh, ended up being uh, wearables, really. And that was one that came a little bit later. And what I realized over time is that people were really interested in these EEG wearables that were all really just coming out right when I was starting to make videos. You know, the early ones like NeuroSky, Emotive, uh, Muse. 
Uh, these were all really just putting out their first product lines as I was making these videos. And I made one uh, using NeuroSky and then other later ones on Musing Emotive. And people were just so interested in these technologies. And I think the reason why that is is because uh, you, the audience, can interact with what I'm talking about. You know, if I talk about a functional MRI mas machine or magnetic encephalography, it's like, well, that's really all well and good, but you know, I've never seen one of these machines. Uh, I've never really interacted with one. I can't play around with it. You know, what relevance does this have to me? What I love about uh, these EEG devices and other wearables that are coming out is that you can uh, purchase them yourself, uh, use them, engage with them, uh, and then uh, relay your experience in things like the Muse Facebook community and other uh, blog uh, uses where people, again, it's democratized. You can get personal experience and really have it be very relevant to you in your own life. And I think that's why this uh, uh, area, this niche has been so successful is it's this incredible democratization of neuroscience. And I, I love it so much. It's so awesome to watch it happen, watch it grow and watch it evolve. And I'm sure you're watching it right along with me. So, uh, you know, over time just, uh, you know, I ended up taking a professional neurofeedback course through STENS and then put out a couple of videos on uh, how EEG actually works, how it works in these wearables, and those videos did incredi incredibly well. And then getting further into meditation because that's something I was really into as well. And naturally Muse was uh, really going into that niche with neurofeedback technology, so uh, investigating the Muse, and later MindLift coming on with neurofeedback, and then things like uh, Muse Monitor, allowing people to record their own brainwaves and post their individual brainwave frequencies on places like the Muse Facebook community. Um, and then back to the title of this video, you know, that's where I really came up with that term, personal EEG devices, because um, it was just like these personalized EEG devices, you know, and whatever you want to call them, that's really where that term came from. And uh, it's really been uh, transformative, I think, for the meditation neurofeedback community, but also for my channel, my work. And uh, pretty soon here, I'm going to be going full time into this work. So you should be seeing even more content coming from me. I have to finish up my commitment with the military here um, as a psychiatrist, but uh, I'm really looking forward to diving in deeper with uh, Tech for Psych and what we're doing. And as we uh, develop the group coaching program more, I'll give you more information on that and we'll be taking uh, more uh, cohorts as we go throughout the year. But again, thank you so much. Please leave comments about what you're interested in. Um, I'm working on a number of different projects right now. Uh, pretty soon I'll be putting out a review video on the Dream 2. Um, I've got a hemoencephalography do-it-yourself kit <laughs> that comes from a young gentleman up in Fairbanks, Alaska that I'm working on. Uh, and then uh, a lot of interviews coming up as well with people that have been doing group coaching um, and individual coaching using MindLift and other uh, program systems, uh, some meditation masters coming on. So, uh, so excited about what's coming. So excited to pass this uh, early stage 10,000 subscriber count. Uh, I think that it's going to grow a lot from there. Um, but even at 10,000 subscribers, it's amazing to see the engagement and the enthusiasm of this small community. So I can't wait to see what happens next. Thanks so much for listening about my personal story about how the YouTube channel started up and where personal EEG devices come from and my vision for moving forward with Tech for Psych. I really think that we need to learn how to interface with these machines as AI becomes more prominent and we're gonna be more responsible, more powerful as individuals for interacting one-on-one -on -one with technology. I can't think of a better way than um, using meditation and self-development uh, and neurofeedback to understand how to interface with technology and these machines. That might sound ominous or weird, but I think that's really what we are laying the groundwork for as we move forward into more powerful technologies like a uh, functional MRI wearable or uh, Neuralace interfaces like uh, uh, Elon Musk's company uh, Neuralink is working on. So those technologies I think are coming and we're really laying some important groundwork here using these personal EEG devices and uh, using our self-development self and spiritual development in order to interact with these technologies. So again, thanks so much for listening. It's Dr. Cody Rall. See you again soon.